Welcome everyone to our uh, latest instalment in our licensing uh, webinar. Uh, today we have uh, with us uh, Baden Appleyard, the uh, Program Director of Osgoal. Hello Baden. Hi, Adrian. With us down visiting uh, sunny Canberra. In the middle of winter again. <laughs> We'll have to go out and visit you in Queensland. Uh, yes, sure. especially at this time of year. Uh, we also have uh, Chris Reeves, who's a uh, business analyst at uh, the AMS office in Canberra. Uh, he takes care of the uh, design of the AMS systems. Hi, Chris. Thank you, Adrian. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, the reason we've got uh, Chris here today is that there's been a, a little uh, update in the AND systems in a, a software release that happened in July that now uh, has added support for information about um, licensing. So we thought we'd get uh, Chris to walk us through those uh, new uh, features um, and we'll have some discussion of that. Um, after that, we'll uh, be heading off and have a, a chat with Baden about uh, what's happening in the Osgold world, and we'll have some discussion uh, from uh, any of the participants in our webinar. Uh, the way to do that is to type a question into in your own screen there, and I'll uh, when we break for questions, I'll just go through that list and. Um, if you have a microphone, I'll ask you to uh, ask a question. If not, we'll just read it out. So um, let's go to Chris now. Um, Chris, could you uh, show us what's different in Research Data Australia uh, to do with uh, the filtering of licenses? Not problem at all. Thanks for that, Adrian. Um, those that don't know me, I'm Chris Reeves. I'm a business analyst with the technical team at Hands. And, um, Pretty much today, I'm going to be talking to you about our yes, uh, license, licensing that we introduced within our release eight, which was released, software release eight that was released last week. Um, pretty much during our recent software release, uh, functionality was included within to allow record providers to specify license types pertaining to their collections. So what we what we might start off with now is we, we've introduce a functionality which allows a user of RDA to search for a, a license type based on a particular category that we've defined. So that's um, if someone's looking for stuff in Research Data Australia. Yes, that's correct. They can filter a search, for example, uh, according to whether the material is licensed in a particular way, is that? Y yes, that's correct. So essentially it's a, it's a faceted search. We have a, a, a number of categories, which is um, open license. We have non-commercial license. We have non-derivative license, restrictive license, no license, and unknown. So, and in under so, if I'm, those, so if I'm looking so, for materials on whatever, Blue Ren observations, and... Uh, it, it had a license type of CC BY. I wanted to say, look, if, if I can't use this stuff, if it's not open to be reused, then don't even show it to me. Yep. Uh, only show me the stuff which is open or non-commercial, depending on what I want. Yep, that's um, right. Then I can filter those results out. That's, so. that's right. So what, I, what I'll show you now is, within our uh, research data search screen here, we have down the side, we've got some faceted boxes, and then right down the bottom, we have the license. Uh, these are the functional categories that I just spoke about. And what we'll do now is we'll just jump into open license. Open license essentially contains uh, two Creative Commons license and a GPL. So CC BY, CC BY SA. So anything that's anything that any record that contains one of these three licenses will now be displayed within research data within this faceted search. So we've got 1,400 or so records that have come up. That's exactly right. So currently we would have 1,400 plus of records within RDA that do contain an open license. Okay. So how, uh, how does that get in there? I mean, if I'm a, a provider to 
the search data in Australia? How do I make sure that my records um, uh, yeah, yeah, contains that stuff. information and, and how has the system then pull it out? Yeah, not a problem at all. So essentially what a record provider will, will do is either give us a record or within our manage my records screen, uh, they're able to edit a particular collection or record. Just let this load just a yeah. well, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> Grab a cup of tea. <laughs> They can now add a rights element, and within this rights element, there is now a license type. Uh, es essentially, we've within this release, we've given initials that are predefined list of various license types. This is we're, we're not restricting any user to use these particular license types. You can define your own, so don't be too worried that you know your license is not up there. But currently we do have uh, the Creative Commons, we have GPL, we have Osgol Restrictive, no license. And then as I was just talking about, you can define your own, we have unknown or other. So unknown is pretty much, if a record provider is unsure of what their license is for that collection, just place unknown. And that, sh and that should at least give us uh, an indication that there is a license within, within, that, cat within that collection, but you're really not too sure what it is. And then other, we can, if we click other, we can start defining another license type that you believe is related to that collection. Uh, we also try and encourage uh, record providers to, I guess, send us an email and give us uh, their license type. So potentially in the future, we can add that into our license type list. So you don't have to keep putting other in and it allows other users to, to define that license as well. So what we'll do now is we'll just we'll just add a basic CC by the value. We can just type in any information we want relating to that license, and then also a, a rights URI. So pretty much if we want to link it back to the CC by or any other licensing type. So essentially, we'll just save that there. What I'll do now is we'll just jump back into one of these records. We'll just search for this record and then I guess that's the same. Might just have to bear with me, we just have to find this record. I think in the same system. It was in the same system. <laughs> So essentially what we're, what we're trying to do now is just making sure that this um, record is now published after we've updated our, updated our license rights. And then we'll just jump back into the record itself and just show you exactly how that uh, license type is being displayed within the RDA. So uh, on that, the list that we had there is the pre-populated um, list of different license types. Yes. Um, when they, um, how did that list um, relate to the, to the searching categories that you had before? Okay, so, so pretty much the searching categories, uh, we talked about that there was a number of, number of various um, categories there, but uh, open license, we have CC by CC by SA GPL. They sit under the open license type uh, right, so functional category. So pretty so much once they define mm -hmm. that that particular license type, mm -hmm. our system will then just know that it's in that particular functional category that it's under okay. open or unknown. Or so the idea of having the, the the searching type different from the license type is so that. People who have come to a search data Australia don't necessarily need to know all the different licenses that are out there, uh, all the different ones, or even know which Creative Commons license exactly. they want. It's, it's just exactly. to say, I want you to use as, an open license. Exactly, as long as they know that they're looking for that you know, non commercial or 
open license, it's time for that particular collection. No, they can go in there and they're guaranteed that they're going to get that type of license type. Good, so here you've got a record for us. Yep, oh, that's so, the one you just did, isn't yep, right? so that's okay. the one that we just mocked up mm -hmm. and we've added the CC BY uh, license type. I'll just jump into it into Unigan, which you may see. And you can see just on your right within the access box that it now displays the, the license type and it actually shows the logo of, of the type of Creative Commons uh, logo that it is uh, related to the license type. Is it? Yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> <laughs> just, this is great. And I've, I've just got a, a couple of questions that have sort of arisen as I've been watching this take place. Um, one query I've got is on this screen is, um, is there a hyperlink underneath that logo back to the license itself? Uh, it, it, currently there's not, but there is um, plans for in the future to potentially link that to. That, that, would, that would be good there are. because then we could see the terms and conditions mm -hmm. of the license. Of the license. In that, um, Layden, there's yeah. a, uh, Anne's is in a funny kind of middleman position mm -hmm. in that, uh, if you want to actually get the data, mm. and would be keen for you to know, uh, so who, well, this one's been, that's a dummy record that we've created, but uh, let's say this was data from the CSIRI, right? mm -hmm. uh, and would like that the I didn't realise that was a dummy data. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought Intelin was some sort of taxer or something to do with T's. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. <laughs> um, but if this was stuck in CSIRO, yes. from an ANT point of view, mm. it's when you coach, when you go to download the, the 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 data set, it's at that point that we would uh, advise people to really check the okay. terms and conditions. Right. At the Research Data Australia point of view, ANT's business is to make sure that you find the data that you want. Sure. And so here mm. we're really not describing the legal. Uh, details of what that what that license in, right. entails, but it's really another piece of information on which you can base your your decisions to say yes, I'm interested in this data because it has these properties. Sure. The actual delivery of here's your legal notice. Yeah, we feel is uh, a relationship between the data provider and the data consumer, which right. is further on down, which is why we've. Been fairly vague here. It just says CC BY. It doesn't really give you the version mm -hmm. or the country, etc. But it gives you an indication of what you're going to be able to do with it. Okay. The legal notice is uh, a little bit outside of Anne's particular um, business. Okay. Uh, the only other question I had, which might invite the same answer from you, Adrian, I think, um, is just in respect of the record and. Uh, accurately sort of stating what what you're buying into so you know if you're if you're looking for a CC by license um, uh, some government agencies for example produce material where by and large it is CC by but there'll be some exclusions contained within that and they exclude that in the copyright statement that they attach with the uh, CC by license is the rights field a, a place where one of your contributor groups could put, if they wished, something in there to say, well, yeah, CC BY, except for this small little bit, mm. or not? Uh, like, yes, or absolutely. How, there's, there's is there three, a rule around curation of those fields? Three bits of structured information you can provide here. Mm. One is the license type, so that's yep. this one was CC BY. There was a, a text field there, which yep. would be the ideal spot to put in any other sort of textual, you know, verbose statements around it. Right. Um, and then there was a URI, which um, was the spot to put the image the reference to that, uh, to the license itself. Okay. So the URI could, in fact, contain the location of the CC by this. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. That'll be the place. And in some, you know, in the sort of open linked data mm. world part mm. of it, some some machines or people would look at these records and they'd only just look at the URI and say, mm. okay, I know what that is. Mm. I'll link other stuff to yep. it. So that, that that having the URI there as part of the information is making this these records and this information open data mm. sort of enabled. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you no, know, very good. It's um, to me very similar to what um, you find in advanced search in Google. 
Uh, or funny you should say that, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but for the when we were designing it, I, I actually went to Google and said, how does Google deal with the thousands of licenses yeah. that could possibly be out there? Yeah. And that's where we got this idea of the functional searching types, the yeah. sort of functional license open, and then mapping all sorts of things back there. I didn't mm. I did write to them and say, you know, what things are in your open license, but they did not dignify me with a response. Yeah. So, uh, we just maintain a table that says, you know, the things which have been registered with us as open license. Sure, sure. There'll be a little bit of interpretation there. But, you know. mm. Well, I, I see that um, YouTube announced uh, recently, uh, today or yesterday, um, well, no, sorry, Creative Commons announced it, that there are now 40 million CC licensed YouTube videos after Google put the, um, the functionality into YouTube to declare what license you wanted to place your video up there under. Right. Um, there's now 40 million videos, CC license. So, mm -hmm. and that's only been a little while. Well, we have 1,400. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> <Let's start. laughs> uh, just on that, uh, Chris, uh, we only uh, the change that came in with the, with the, the new systems and with the RIPCS changes yes. last year, uh, last month, were that there is a, st a structured information about these licenses. Yes. So you know, we have structured information about the license type and the URI. Um, previously, there was a kind of text place there to put the stuff in. Uh, so in, the, in the, the previous versions of the Search Data Australia, how are you dealing with the uh, legacy records that are not encoded with the new license types? Sure, sure. Um, so essentially all legacy records um, are, there's probably a number of people out there that are wondering, well, you know, what is happening to our, you know, old records? So we've replaced you know, a Creative Commons license in there, and is it going to be displayed on RBA? And essentially, what we've what we've done in the background is all previous records. A lot of these license types were defined within a rights element, but not this new license element. So it was just a text box when you it's, wrote in well, something exactly. saying it was, this, just, it was just a free text. Yeah, this text collection is yeah. available under Creative Commons or something like that. A text thing, but which must make it very difficult to to uh, work with in the in the structured search and filtering. Well, well exactly, and and what and what we've done now is we've we've tried to include all of those legacy records that have included have been you know specified with the license type within those functional categories within the faceted search. So what we've done in the background, we've pretty much just done a bit of a search, tried to find you know, what license type we've popped in there. We've pulled that out and we've said, yep, you're an open license. So we've now put you under the open license um, faceted search category. So when people are, the RDA users are looking for open licenses, they'll still be able to find yours, even though that you haven't provided that license correctly you know, in terms of our structure, you'll still be able to found, be, be able to be found, you know. So just to be sure there, if last year or the year before, before all this new structured yes. information was yes. available, I'd given you a, a record that had the, the URL of the Creative Commons yes. Australia yes. or you know, version two or something like that. In the background, your systems are going through saying, yeah, that's an open license and that appears in this new structured search that you've got. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. So we pretty much just see that it's a CC BY or CC SA, and we just pull that out. And, you know, no one really has to worry about it. It's all happening in the background. So, but there are now better ways to make sure that that information is well. Exactly. You know, we do have that you know license license element now. So you know, all all current record providers can you know, update your records and put that into the license element and that be displayed correctly and people can you know, search for that CC by find yours. Hmm. So this is a really quite exciting actually from the uh, Osgold point of view, is that a baby? Absolutely. Um, this is terrific functionality. Terrific. Yeah. And um, in a sense uh, driving something where okay now you can describe the licenses there it may actually be a driving point for people to think, okay, how are we going to license our, our, our records and, and our, how is it here? From, a, from an ANS point of view, it's very exciting for us in that um, 
It's a couple of things. Really, ANS is here to promote the reuse, the, the efficient reuse of research data. And if it's not clear what you can do with, with something, in many cases, it means you can't do anything. Um, if you've got lawyers on your back or patents or et cetera, and it's not clear where, you know, what the provenance of one element of the data is, it's not clear that you can do something with it. In many cases, you can't, um, or people will hesitate, or uh, it will take a long time to, to work out whether you can do something, or your lawyers will just say, oh, well, you know, don't do it. Um, or, um, you know, is that the case, you know, Australian law, if I say nothing about the rights uh, of a particular object, what, what's mm. the default? Um, well, yeah, you presume that all rights are reserved. So mm -hmm. all of the rights that you have in copyright uh, that are conferred upon you by the Copyright Act, the, the right to you know, reproduce and communicate and publish and all those sorts of things, uh, reserved to you and only you have them. So nobody else has them. Right, so, so sorrow <laughs> is going to the great trouble. Oh, sorry, let's not say sorrow. Let's, let's not say, say Let's say <laughs> a you know, large Australian research organisation has, <laughs> has gone to the trouble, and I really mean not sorrow here, <laughs> Um, it has gone to the trouble of you know, making a, its data available to the world, um, collected it, invested in big systems to, to make it available, they've published information about it in the research data show, but if they've been silent on the uh, copyright of it, mm. uh, then in strictly following the letter of the law, it means that uh, no one can use it or it, uh, only yeah. It's well. It's it's the ultimate tease. You know, you can <laughs> you can you can find it. You can see it. You can <laughs> probably use it for your own private use or study. But beyond that, beyond any exemptions that, or you know, permissions that you have that are conferred upon you by the Copyright Act, and they're very limited, uh, you can't do anything with it. So so the. You know, if you would like people to reuse your work, if you want to be noticed, and you get noticed by people reusing your work, put a license on there that permits it to be reused, like one of the open licensing systems. It's a very clear statement to people saying, yeah. you know, I'm, I've created this stuff because I want it to be used in science or other research or other, you know, humanities work. I want, I want people to use it. Mm. Uh, you really have to be proactive about saying that. You can't be silent. Yeah, yeah you can't be silent. That's right. It's, otherwise, it's presumed that you don't um, effectively. And uh, you know, I, I guess uh, I'm just looking at the list of questions. Oh, no, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm sure I thought, I thought this might be an interesting segue because uh, uh, I, I see a great question there from Alison. Um, you know, for uh, Alison Maloney. Maloney. So, uh, yeah. are we able to go to Alison? And uh, Alison, are you with us? Got a question here about um, a good understanding of CC licenses for researchers. Are you with us, Alison? Yes, I am. Yes. All right. So, what was your question, Alison? Um, so, basically, like we're trying to um, do some work in educating um, researchers and, and people working with them about. Um, Creative Commons licenses and using them. I just wondered that if um, someone was going into um, edit a, a record and go to, going to the rights field, when they're choosing the the license, the Creative Commons license, is there any um, further information about the type of license that they're choosing? Um, you know, some more specific. Um, help on how to, you know, which one to choose. I know they're very quite basic and it's reasonably clear, but yeah, I just wondered if there is any links back to, say, the Creative Commons website or. Alison, what, uh, where, where, where do you work, uh, Alison? Sorry if that's not a. Um, Deakin University. Sorry? Deakin University, is that right? Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. Um, the, there is not any help at the moment in the and sort of manual screen uh, about you know what are appropriate licenses there. So that I'll take that as a as a suggestion that we should um, give people some uh, help at that point. Of course, if you're 
creating the information back at your university and just providing it to us through a, a you know an automated harvest we need to provide you that information as well what we would do is actually refer you to the uh osgold site which is the australian government's open access and licensing framework uh, which is uh, a framework which, which has already been adopted by all the jurisdictions, all the, the, the Commonwealth and state jurisdictions in Australia on um, uh, an approach to licensing publicly funded um, information. And yeah. uh, there's a very good uh, license speaker there, but we do have the program director here, so I might just ask him to uh, summarise what kind of help you, uh, could be available at that point of decision. Well, sure. Um... And maybe we might have a chat later, uh, Adrian, about a link somewhere. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yes, do come to the Osgoal site because the question you have is the question that many public servants have when they're looking at publishing material as well. So there's a lot of information yeah. on osgoal.gov.au about Creative Commons licences, including how to mark, mark your work with them. Uh, but uh, I was, I'll, I'll just digress briefly to what I was going to talk about afterwards. Um, Oh, you want me to show you on the thing? Yeah. Um, so, sorry, I've just been told I have a computer I can play with, so I might, and you might be able to see this. So I'll just put it up. So yes, uh, thanks for that. Screen. That's a great suggestion, Alison. We'll think about putting a link there back at the on our site to people who, so that they can um, get some information about licences at that point. So you can see uh, on the screen, hopefully, the Osgold site that's got the list of all the Creative Commons licenses. And on each of those, you can view the license D, which is the human readable version. And there's also a link to the legal code, which is the lawyer or insomniac version um, of the license. So um, that's available. But the other thing I was going to mention was the um, license chooser tool, which um, assists uh, you by asking you a series of questions about the material that you're seeking to apply a license to as to whether, for example, it has any nested copyrights in it that might prevent the application of a CC license or something like that. Um, it's been a very busy week this week for OSCO. We've had a board meeting, we've had a Commonwealth Government Practitioners meeting. One of the outcomes of the board meeting was approval to uh, build the new version of the license chooser tool, um, which we have been working in the background on developing a specification for, and that's now being quoted on. So with the board's approval, we'll now go ahead and build that. So hopefully within a couple of months, there'll be a new version um, of the license chooser tool there. Not to say the current one is not a bad one to use. Um, we've just got a note on there that um, it refers to the earlier Guild Frameworks um, license chooser tool. And you simply click on that and there's uh, just a few questions and so forth that it asks you to deal with. But that will change soon, but that's a good tool to use right now, um, if you wish. Good. Well, that sounds like a good um, segue to the uh, Osgol. Uh, what's been happening since last we met uh, in the Osgol arena? Maybe what's, what's the news in that arena? Uh, a couple of things, I suppose, uh, we can talk about was um, there's on the Osgo website, if it's still on your screen, Alex, is the, yeah. is the, is the, you'll see down the bottom, there's a Microsoft Office plugin coming soon. Uh, that was a piece of software that we were looking to build to enable you to apply a CC license to Microsoft Office documents. Um, the spec, again, has been worked on over the last little while and the board approved the expenditure on the production of that. So there'll be two new pieces that go into the Oscar website, the license chooser and the office plugin, which will be coming, both coming soon. The other thing that the board approved. Sorry, Baden, yep. what does the Oscar office plugin do? Uh, yep, so it, it um, very good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it allows you to put the, the, uh, the, the license logo, it's basically a drop down menu. What do you want to put in? And it will show you, uh, it's a CC file. So I'm in Microsoft, Microsoft Word. Word. I've just created something I wanted to share, or Microsoft Excel if it's a data service. Sure. Like that, yeah. Yep. And so it will drop in the CC logo uh, with the hypertext link underneath it that takes you to the human readable D. It will also drop in the URL in plain text underneath the license logo. 
And under that, it will uh, uh, also drop in the, and you set these up in the settings prior to, um, the attribution statement you want. So it might be copyright, in Queensland's case, state of Queensland, open brackets, whatever department, close brackets, year. So that attends to all of the basic elements that you need for a CC license for someone to reuse, and you can know how you want to be attributed. And underneath that, it will um, also permit you to in, in, um, place a bespoke copyright statement. So you might want to say something about if you've got any further queries or if you want a, a different license, come and contact us here or those sorts of things. And uh, they can be included as well. So it's, it's really, we see the missing link between creating the material, which is usually born digital these days, and uh, applying the license. Mm, especially when uh, the portability of these objects, the Excel spreadsheet, yep. may well have been on a page or may well have had a when the first person downloaded the spreadsheet, yep. they may well have said, yes, I can see the license here, I'll, I'll abide by it. But when that's just emailed out to all the other people and they don't get it, don't receive it in that same context of that website which had a, a mm. copyright statement, mm. there's nothing necessarily in the document that would tell them. Whereas with this, it will go into the... It, it will, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure the uh, spec also says it goes into the, like the metadata, you know, Word documents, you see the author and so forth, and this will, this will go in there as well. So we see that's uh, that's pretty important. There, there are other plugins around. The Creative Commons did at one stage a default one, but it was just it was very, um, I wouldn't say basic, but it, it, it did the job of just putting the CC license in. Um, a lot of our government clients want a little bit more than that. So uh, and anecdotally, the very long tail of Australian researchers. Uh, do their data management in Microsoft Excel. Oh, ah, they good. Yeah. Right. Well, there you go. Um, okay, so the other thing, uh, we're going to have a bit of a revamp across the website in general anyway, but one of the things we're going to be removing is the secure login for OSCOL practitioners um, now. So uh, what's behind the sealed section will be exposed to the world. So that will, that will happen in another month or so. Uh, there's another... Um, uh, and so just behind there, there's some calendars uh, showing what sort of events are happening worldwide uh, in Australia with, for example, Craig uh, Tomler's uh, calendar that he has for open uh, Gov 2.0 type events. Uh, and then also be an OSCOL calendar. It'll all be in the form of the Google calendar as well uh, with the click options on and off. There was something else that we were going to do. That's right. We were going to uh, expose all of the jurisdictions pages. So behind the OSCOL website, you can't see it at the moment, but there is a dedicated page for each one of the jurisdictions for them all to place their, their uh, links to their policy documents or their key, uh, key operational documents uh, for staff as to you know, what they need to do in terms of licensing and so forth. Um, they will be made public uh, soon, um, irrespective of whether the jurisdiction is at the, at the point or not. Um, they will all be made public. So. Uh, if you're looking for the policies that officers follow in Queensland, they will be on there. Um, same with Commonwealth, we'll probably have links to the uh, Attorney General's IP policy uh, guidelines and manual and uh, various other statements that have been made by the Australian Government on Open Government. So that's probably what's going to happen there. We uh, are forming a strategic uh, partnership with the National Copyright Unit. At, um, based out of the New South Wales Department of Education to deal with some of the issues that were raised on page three of the Sydney Morning Herald and syndicated through the age uh, last Monday concerning the copyright royalty fees that are paid um, by schools and by, for reuse of material. Um, uh, there's an organisation called CAL, a Copyright Agency Limited, that collects royalties from government and others uh, for reuse of copyright material and uh, we want to at least um, cut back the cost that schools are paying for reuse of material that's owned by the same government or other governments. So, for example, if the school um, downloads uh, um, some material in Queensland from the Department of Environment and Resource Management website, the school ought not pay the Department of Environment and Resource Management for the reuse of those materials. Um, and we will achieve that by um, more deeper implementation of um, 
Osgol and applying CC licenses to material on all those government sites. So we're working to fix up that difficulty and save a lot of money. Hopefully. Osgol helping young kids in school. <laughs> well, it's, well uh, <laughs> the children are our future. <laughs> you get a, a photo opportunity. Aid <laughs> and saving dollars for the young kids. Uh, that's, <laughs> there won't be any photo opportunity, that's for sure. But, but certainly, uh, we are working closely with the National Copyright Union. And this is a very important initiative because uh, I've seen the figures, and there is a lot of money that's, that's being wasted. Um, so we're trying to do something there. Um, the uh, Commonwealth Osgol Practitioners Group met um, on yesterday, and we're looking at uh, creating a subgroup uh, specifically dealing with research and publication of research uh, through publishers and um, how the arrangements with publishers um, in terms of the licensing or in some cases an assignment of copyright uh, will be managed given that government employs a lot of scientists and they do write a lot of papers and uh, Crown Copyright covers their work. Um, so uh, so really the, the policy is, is generally going to be that uh, in, in the Australian government at any rate, um, we prefer to see uh, that material go out um, to the publisher or anyone else uh, under a CC by license. And we just want to look at what are the issues around that. And uh, uh, I, know Jim, uh, I know Sue Fife was here, she's, she's left now, but um, uh, this is a, a particularly important for Geoscience Australia, but there are other government agencies uh, in the Commonwealth and also the states, I might add, that have an interest in this. So, would that cover universities, yeah. uh, researchers doing work for government? Well, ANS is an ex officio, if not more, member of the Commonwealth Practitioners Group. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly you will be involved uh, from a you know, communications standpoint, mm -hmm. but we would like to certainly open these discussions up a little bit no, more. No, it was the policy that uh, you talked about government scientists. But yes. there are a lot of people in universities and CSIRO that do work for government departments. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's. it's like the lady I think mentioned before, um, you know, settling who owns the copyright and how it will be discharged uh, very early on in the project is critical uh, because then you don't have to have these discussions about what happens if a paper is generated afterwards and on who owns what. Good. All right. Well, thanks for that, Baden. And uh, for those of you who have joined us for the first time, Baden. Um, kind of has a, a consulting relationship with ANS as well. So uh, if any of the uh, ANS partners, particularly if you're in a project uh, with ANS and you're trying to, you get to the stage where you've created some system or some publication mm -hmm. process, and you're wondering about how to you know, select materials for a release and how to apply a, a policy around uh, copyright, etc. Um, don't hesitate to contact um, ANS or Baden directly. Um, he's uh, very happy to um, give advice and he travels around the place a lot. Um, just the right amount to keep it in touch with all the Australian government jurisdictions. And so he's usually never too far from uh, a university when he's uh, around the place. So he can also come in and um, give, a, give a guidance as well. Um, so I think that's about it for for this um, seminar, this uh, webinar. We thank you very much, uh, Chris Reeves, who yeah. prefers, I think, to um, sit there designing fantastic systems for ANS, and we had to coax him out to the the ANS studio here, and he's uh, given us a really terrific walkthrough. Thanks for that, Chris. Thank you. And uh, thanks again, Dave, for uh, popping in. Uh,